In this video, we are going to discuss what serial dilutions are and how to solve serial dilution problems. A serial dilution is exactly what it sounds like, a series of dilutions. For example, an initial stock solution might be diluted down, then that diluted sample would be further diluted in a second step. In many ways, serial dilution problems are like any other dilution problem, and the equation m1v1 equals m2v2 applies. Except in this case, we have to think about a series of dilutions rather than just one. Although most people will be familiar with m1v1 equals m2v2, I always think of this equation as m initial v initial equals m final v final, since it reminds me that the ending volume is the one that counts, not the volumes of the two solutions being mixed together. For example, if a 2 milliliter concentrated stock solution was diluted with 3 milliliters of buffer, the initial volume is 2 milliliters and the final volume is 5 milliliters, since that would be the volume of the buffer plus the stock solution. So this would be a 2 to 5 dilution, because the final solution will have two parts of the original concentrated solution for every five parts of the total volume. The 2 to 5 ratio here is known as the dilution factor, and can be used to determine the ending concentration of the new diluted solution. For instance, if we started with a 10 molar stock solution and diluted it as shown, the final solution would be 2 fifths the strength, or be a full molar solution. In this example, we use the initial and final volumes to determine the dilution factor, and ultimately the final concentration of the solution. However, dilution questions might not always be phrased this way, and instead might ask you to solve for the starting concentration, the final volume of the solution, or the starting volume of the solution. Even though what we are solving for differs from question to question, the approach to solving questions is essentially the same in all cases, and can be broken down into a couple of steps. Let's look at those steps now. First, determine whether you're being asked to solve for the concentration or volume. In this example, we're trying to find the final concentration. Next, determine whether the value you are solving for is smaller or larger than the value they have given to you in the question. In this case, we were diluting a 10 molar stock solution, so we know the concentration of the final solution must decrease. Now arrange the other given units as a fraction, taking into account whether the previous value is increasing or decreasing. If the value is decreasing, then arrange the numbers to get the smaller of the two possible fractions. If on the other hand the value is increasing, then arrange so that you get the larger of the two fractions. Therefore, in this instance, we would arrange the volume values as 2 fifths, not 5 halves, since 2 fifths is the smaller of the two possible fractions, and we know the final concentration will be less than the starting concentration. Now multiply your starting value by this fraction. That would mean that the final concentration would be 10 times 2 fifths, or 4 molar. What if we were working this question in reverse, and asked to determine the initial concentration given the final 4 molar concentration though? We would follow the exact same steps as before, except this time our concentration would be increasing, so we would need to flip our fraction before multiplying the two values together. Therefore, the initial concentration could be calculated by taking 4 molar times 5 halves, which would be equal to 10 molar. We can use this same technique when trying to calculate the starting and ending volumes of a dilution too. For practice sake, let's walk through how we would do that now. In this instance here, we've been given the starting and ending concentrations as well as the initial volume. Since we'll be solving for the final volume in this case, we're gonna go ahead and take that two milliliter volume and set it aside. Now let's consider whether that volume would be going up or down when we dilute the sample. Well, since we're adding additional volume to dilute it, we must have a final volume that is greater than two milliliters. In that instance, we know that we need to arrange our fraction in such a way that we're going to have a larger of the two fractions. That would be 10 over 4, and when we multiply these two values together, 2 times 10 fourths, we would get 5 milliliters as the ending volume. From here, we can actually work this backwards to figure out how much buffer solution or diluting solution we added to this, since we know that the starting volume was 2 milliliters, the ending volume 5 milliliters, that must mean that we added 3 milliliters to the solution. All right, now that we've seen that instance, let's move on to the last way they could ask you to calculate this problem. 
In this scenario, it's set up very similarly to the last problem, except here we've been given the final volume rather than the starting volume. So we'll start by setting that five milliliters aside, then considering whether the starting volume would be higher or lower than five milliliters. In this case, since we had to add volume to get to the final volume, it makes sense that the initial volume would be less than five milliliters. From here, we're now gonna take the two remaining concentration values and arrange them to get the smaller of the two fractions. In this case, that would be four tenths, and we'll multiply that by five. When we do this, we get two milliliters, which is our initial volume. Up to this point, we have only looked at a single dilution, but what about the serial part? Here the approach is the same, but we will repeat the process multiple times. For example, let's look at an example where we were asked to determine the final concentration of a solution after two different dilutions. In this problem, we'll begin like we have for the other problems that we've looked at by trying to first figure out what we're solving for. In this case, we're going to be solving for the final concentration. Now let's consider whether the final concentration would be higher or lower than the initial concentration. Since this is a dilution, we should expect to see a drop in the concentration, which means that our final concentration will be less than 20 molar. Now we need to go ahead and begin to arrange the dilutions that we have, breaking these into two separate parts and considering them separately, then combining all the math together. We're gonna to start with two milliliters of a 20 molar solution and dilute it until it has a volume of three milliliters. In this instance here, we'll be using two and three to determine our fraction. Since the three milliliters is our final volume, we don't have to consider the addition of these two solutions. That means that since we have a decrease in the concentration, the fraction for the first dilution will be 2 over 3. Now let's consider the second dilution. Here we took 0.01 milliliters and diluted it till we have 40 milliliters of a final solution. Again, since our concentration is going to be dropping, we're going to arrange this to get the smaller of the two fractions. That would end up being 0.01 over 40. Now what we'll do is take that 20 milliliters and multiply it by both of the dilution factors. So this would end up being 20 times 2 thirds times 0.01 over 40. We can go ahead and begin to simplify this by recognizing that 20 times 2 is 40. So on the top and the bottom, we can cancel out 40, leaving us with 0.01 over 3. We'll go ahead and look at this first as though it were one third, since that's a fraction that's pretty easy to solve. That would end up being 0.33. Now we'll consider how many decimals we've left out when we looked at one third. In this instance, all we have to do is move our decimal in 0.01 until it equals one, and that will tell us how many decimals we're off by. That would be two decimals, and since this is gonna make the number smaller, we need to go ahead and add two decimal points in front of 0.33, which would end up being 0.0033, and that would be our final concentration in this case. Finally, let's round this video out by solving one last problem. This question asks, a student performed a serial dilution of a stock solution by mixing three milliliters of the solution with seven milliliters of a buffer. After that, the student took one milliliter of the new solution and mixed it with more buffer to produce a 30 milliliter solution at 0.5 molar. What was the molarity of the original stock solution? Let's start by drawing a picture to help us visualize what's going on here. I'll begin with the first sentence. It says that a student performed a serial dilution of a stock solution by mixing three milliliters of the solution with seven milliliters of buffer. So we're gonna have three milliliters. It's gonna be added to seven milliliters for a total volume of 10 milliliters. So this is going to be go three milliliters to 10 milliliters. Now what do they do? It says after that, the student took one milliliter of the new solution and mixed it with more buffer to produce a 30 milliliter solution. So in this case, we have one milliliter as our starting volume and our final volume is gonna be 30 milliliters since they state that this was a 30 milliliter solution that was produced. 
Now that everything is set up and we have our final and our initial volumes for the two separate dilutions identified, we can begin to go ahead and set up the rest of the problem. Here we have a 0.5 molar ending concentration. Let's consider whether that initial concentration will be higher or lower than this value. Well, since the final concentration is 0.5 molar and that's after several dilutions, we would expect the initial concentration to be higher since it's a concentrated solution. From there, this means that all of our fractions are gonna be the larger of the two that are possible. Let's go ahead and look at each now and figure out what these fractions are and then calculate the initial concentration. So for this first one, it's three to 10, which we would arrange as 10 over three. And for the second one, it's one milliliter to 30 milliliters, which we'd arrange as 30 over one. So the final math here would be 0.5 times 10 over three times 30. We can go ahead and cancel out the three on top and bottom, and this would leave us with 0.5 times 10 times 10, or 50 molar. In this instance, the initial concentrated solution was 50 molar, therefore answer choice C is correct. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more MCAT tips and tricks. And if you want to support the channel and help me make more MCAT videos, consider joining my Patreon by clicking on the link in the video's description.